ओके एवरीवन सो नाउ वी आर लर्निंग द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ विजुअल स्टूडियो और द डॉट नेट आईडीई आईडीई इज द इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट एनवायरनमेंट ऑन व्हिच वी वर्क सो हियर द विजुअल स्टूडियो व्हिच वी आर यूजिंग दिस वन इज द आईडीई नाउ हियर द फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट ऑन व्हिच वी आर राइट नाउ दिस इज द विंडोज फॉर्म और वी से इट इज द फॉर्म डिजाइनर सो दिस वन इज द फॉर्म where we can put all the controls control means any radio button we want any label we want we want to write something so on this form we can do it so this one is our first component that is the form designer and if we talk about the second component of visual studio or dot net ide so that one is our toolbox so this is a toolbox where we are having the multiple controls what are the controls every component which is available inside the toolbox just like we are having label we are having the list box so these all are called the controls now we can first of all make this on the left hand side so you can see that we have fixed this toolbox and now from this toolbox we can drag and drop just like i am taking a label so i can drag and drop the label onto the form or i can take out multiple controls like if i say i want one more label here so i can take it now let us say if i want a radio button so i can take out the radio button then if i want let's say text box so text box i can take the dot net provide the auto alignment feature that means whenever you are dropping it gives you the option so that you can align properly just like if i am putting this text box it is giving me the blue lines so by this blue line i am aware where to put it so that they are properly aligned now let's say if i has to take a button so i can also take a button and put it here so this toolbox is a component of visual studio or dot net ide where we are having the multiple controls so i am again putting it back now we are going to learn the next component of dot net ide or the visual studio that is the properties window every control in the dot net is having their own property just like if we see the label one now this label one you see if i click over here you can check out the name is label 1 i click over there again label 2 so similarly if i click then text box 1 then text box 2 radio button 1 and button 1 so if you want to change any of the property then you can simply click on that control and go to the properties window and here you can change all the properties whatever you want so there are multiple properties now there are two things to learn the one the name of property and second thing that is the text of property now text means you want to display something to the user let's say i am the user i can see that right now it is label 1 but if i want to change the name so i can change the name that is user id so now you can see that here user id is coming but if i go back and check the name is still label 1 means if i am going to do the coding i will use label 1 just like if i want to save something into label 1 then i will use this word label 1 so to display the user it is a text and to use the code it is name you can also change the name if you want so that can be changed by simply clicking here and updating but we has to only update the text so if i go on the label 2 then i can also change the text here so here let's say i am saying password so i can also put the password here so user id and password you can see that this is like a login form i am creating so this is the option let's say i am saying this is for the super user or maybe the user so you are saying super user if you are a super user you will click over here or you can provide the multiple options 
Now on this button, you can again click and change the text. You can simply write here like login. So this one is the login button. So this is the text property. Similarly, there are multiple properties like size or you can check out the opacity, maximum or the minimum. So you can want to change a front. Maybe let's say you are saying the front color should be black and the back color should be something. So four color, back color and you want to add on some icon, you want to add on some image, everything is possible. So all the properties are available that you can use one by one with the help of this properties window. Even the form is also having the property. Let's say if I click on this form, you can see that here we are having the form one and in the text section, so you can go here and just like say this is the login form. So this is the login form. So this is how if I click back to the form, you can see login form but still the name of form is form one so while you are doing the coding it will be used as the form one so by using this property window you can change the properties of any of the control now we are discussing the next component of visual studio or dotnet ide that is the solution explorer if you want to see your project name or how many forms are there or if you want to add on some forms, then with the help of the solution explorer, we can do this thing. Right now you can see that Windows application one. So this is the name of project right now. And even if you go on the top, you can see that Windows application one. So this is the name of project we have opted. And right now there is one form, which is form one.vb. Because we are using the vb.net, that's why form1.vb extension is available now let's say i take an example of facebook whenever you are going on the facebook and you just put out the page you see login id and password then press enter once you put the login id and password correctly afterward they show you one page on which you are having a very nice dp or maybe there are some posts you have put then again, there is one more page of your friends, one more page of your photos. So there can be multiple pages. Similarly, this is the desktop application. We are having the form, just like this is one form. Now I want that I have to create multiple form. Means if user enter, user ID and password, we should jump onto the next form. So I simply go on the solution explorer on the project. I right click, then I add and here i simply say windows form so the same option is coming and here you can see that windows form you can provide the name of the form by here right now the name of form is form 2 so no problem we can simply add now you can see that one more form is added here you can see again the form is available now on this form again you can go back to the toolbox just put it now afterward you can put a button if you want or if you want to take out some label or maybe any other thing so the label i am taking so this way this is form 2 which is ready so this way we can create multiple forms i am putting it back so when the multiple forms are created you can jump between multiple forms let, let's say you are having a login page so this is our form 1 then maybe you successfully log in, then we are having a registration page, user registration, or maybe you are having, uh, let's say the project of car parking. So one page for the honor detail, one page for the ticket, or one page for the printing, one page for, let's say the payment. So multiple forms can be created like this. So here we have created the two forms. Now, if I has to run this project, then I will simply click on the start debugging. This is like a play button. Now this start debugging, you can also go on the debug menu and hear the start debugging. So if you click over there, start debugging, you can see that this project will load. And here we are having the project. So this is the running project. 
where you are having the labels like user id and password you can enter the user id let's say this is the user id and this one is the password so you can put the user id and password and you can click on the login right now if i am clicking on the login nothing is happening because i have not done the coding behind this button so the coding should be done behind that one more thing you should note that between form 2 and form 1 the form which is we have created on the first is here once i log in over there then afterward we can go to this form 2 or anywhere depending upon the code which we have done at this time this project is on running stage that's why if you see the icon this play icon or start debugging icon is now not visible but yeah stop and just completely stopping it so these two options are available that means break it and stop it so either you can put this icon by pressing stop debugging so project will stop or you can simply press cancel then again this will stop so these are the two methods by which you can stop the running project now we are discussing the next component of Visual Studio or the .NET IDE that is the Server Explorer. Now this Server Explorer we are having the data connections. We know that whenever we are making any of the project, let's say we are taking the example of the Facebook, it is a big project. Now at the user side, we see whenever we log in, there are so many likes, so many friends are there so many videos are present that is shown to the user but from where these videos are coming somewhere the likes are stored somewhere those videos and pictures are stored so that is called the database wherever we design just like we are using a dotnet or the java php any language we are using we are designing the front end that's why they are called the front end design tool for designing the front end but their data store at some back end back end is like oracle sql so whatever the project we will make let's say this is our project we want that user id and password should be stored into a system into a table and we should fetch from there from that table and match whether the password is matching or not so this type of thing we need a connection from the database so this server explorer helps us to create the data connection data source is the part of this server explorer by which we first connect with the database then afterward we put so many queries queries means should we take complete table inside our project or should we take some entries means how many thing we want in our project so based upon this server explorer we can take out any of the database whatever we want either it is sql or maybe the oracle so all the database can be connected and work with the help of this server explorer using the data sources now we are discussing the next component of visual studio or dotnet ide that is the error list so here you can see that zero error zero warning zero message whenever you are going to make any of the project then in that project sometimes we do some mistakes now if that mistakes are critical so those are in the form of error so they will show you here the error list and if there are some kind of warning warning means they are not halting our system or the project then they will become in the form of warning or the messages so here some types of error or the warnings will come so that we have to resolve if some errors are coming we have to first resolve the error only then we can run the project otherwise project will not run just like if we are working on any of the programming language if there are some mistakes we have to resolve it so here also in the error list they will tell us the different different errors which are available in our program now we are discussing the next component of visual studio where we are going from the view menu that is the code editor so with the help of code editor we can code you can see that we are having two forms one is the form one and another is the form two i have clicked on the form one in design and i just click on view then code 
so here you can see that this is the code of form 1 so this is the code of form 1 here we have to do the coding so this one is the one option for going inside the code but many of the times this is not required to go into the coding by this method by clicking on the view and going to the code so that is not required just like if i am going on the form 1 we know that whenever i run this project and if this project is running i has to put user id and password when i click on the button then code should run so that means i has to write the code inside the button so here if i go back and i am on the form 1 so i will just double click on the button that's it the code will automatically come so here it is giving me the option that i should be working on the button 1 you can see that in the form 1 on button 1 click this code will run so here if i am writing some of the code that code will run when i click on the button so this is the way now let's say if i want to code this radio button i want that whenever this radio button is clicked some code should run so simply you double click on the radio button you can see that radio button one checked change checked change means you just click it or again click back means check change sometime it is clicking or sometimes not so this is check change then this code will run so automatically dotted create these types of functions so functions only come when you double click so this is how the coding will be performed let's say if i am going on the form 2 here also i want to do the coding on the button 1 so i will double click on the button 1 the code of button 1 will be created now inside that i can write some code and that code will run when i click on the button so this coding area this is called the code editor you can see that we can easily differentiate form 1 vb design design means this is the designing phase and here form 1.vb means simply it is the coding area again we are having form 2.vb design so this is the design phase and here form 2.vb this is the coding area of that form so two design will be having the two coding area behind that all the controls which are available just like if i want to do the coding on let's say this text box so i can double click over there so anywhere i can do the coding so all the options are available but yes form 1 coding will be on the form one area only so all the function will be created automatically then we can code for that so this is the code editor so these are the all main components of visual studio or dotnet ide but many of the times whenever you are going to start this visual studio you will not find all the components so from where we can take out these components by simply clicking on the view menu you can see that all the components are available just like code editor designer solution explorer server explorer or maybe error list toolbox properties window so all these components are available so this is all about the components of visual studio or dotnet ide